Hello everybody, this is Miranda the Hybrid, and welcome to a random tutorial in the middle of the week. I know I haven't been doing that many tutorials or, heck, videos for the last week and a half. It's because my real life job has really kind of wound up a lot, and I have a lot of stuff to catch up on. And you know, the real life job is what keeps the electricity running here, so I kind of have to concentrate on it and put the videos aside for, like, maybe another week or so. Also, thank you to my Patreons who have just been sticking around and I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody who comes and watches my videos, who comes to learn. I've accidentally cultivated a really, really, really nice channel with a bunch of really cool people and it's great having you guys here. I feel a little bit bad letting the video slide a bit, but we're gonna fix that right now. We're gonna do a cool tutorial, a nice something nice and you know, kind of lighter end. This tutorial comes from a request I got directly over Instagram. And frankly, this is usually a lesson I teach to younger children uh, back when I actually did teach in person. But you know what? We're gonna draw dragons today. So I've been drawing dragons from basically the time I could hold a pencil. They're one of my favorite things to draw. And over those years, I've cultivated quite a knowledge of drawing dragons, if you could even call that a thing. So let me just whap myself up into the corner. What I'm gonna work on is what people think of classically as a western dragon, which is like four legs and some wings. Honestly, I don't really care about the classification of dragons. It's an imaginary creature. We don't really need to argue about what's a lindworm, what's a drake, what's a wyvern, what's a regular dragon. And the only dragons that really kind of stand out are when you're talking about the South American dragons like Quetzalcoatl. I don't even know how to... Quetzalcoatl? Is that how you pronounce it? Or... Asian dragons, Eastern dragons, which have completely different body shapes and they're extremely identifiable. Other than that, in my eyes, dragons are extremely flexible creatures in their design and definition. So let's get started. So what I usually do when I try teaching people how to draw a dragon, and this person who asked specifically had difficulty with the head, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the general anatomy. So I want to draw the chest area first, and then I'm gonna connect it and I'm gonna draw the back hips and then a nice long neck, the head shape, which for now we're gonna keep as two circles. The rib cage is coming down this way and I like adding an elegant kind of crest coming this way. And we want to have the, pec the, uh, the sternum coming down right over here. So make sure to remember your sternum's in there. It's almost like you're making a trapezoid over here. You got your hip shape, which is like a backwards box in my eyes. One leg connects over here, so you have a movement going forward, a part of the leg going backwards, and this is technically the heel, and this is technically the ball of the foot. And on the front, I like leaving a large area right over here for where the wing connects, because that's a lot of muscle. There has to be a huge amount of muscle right there. And then the front legs will connect right about here, and there's gonna be like a double collarbone, I guess. They go backwards, and then forwards, and then down. If you need help imagining this a bit better, I usually base my dragon's physical body design on a cougar or a big cat of some sort. It just makes sense. And so remember, shoulder, elbow, down, and then you have the hands and stuff. And then after that, you can add in the tail. I'm gonna make it nice and long in this situation. And now for the wings. When you look at the wing, think of your own arm. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boost my picture size so we can actually look at my arm for this. Okay, so kind of put your arm backwards like this, stick it forward like a chicken wing and fan your hands out. Now let's draw essentially what I just did, but on the screen. Okay, so I have my shoulder coming this way. I did this with my hand and my thumb was here and then my fingers were over here, right? Now that looks absolutely ridiculous. Let's elongate the bones though. Imagine that there was a claw over here, but imagine these finger bones were a lot longer. And technically there wouldn't be a fourth one, it depends. Actually, it doesn't really depend on if, you know, your dragon is three or four digits. But suddenly, you see how a dragon's wing works. It's essentially, and this is how a bat's wing also works. You just, it's like this, and then your fingers are the long veins of the dragon's membrane. And you can imagine the bone running this way, and then you have the radius and ulna running up that way. And so you get some twisting motion in here, and you get membrane running from there. You get the membrane coming down here, or wherever you want to put it, frankly. This is up to your imagination where the membranes run to. I like putting my membranes kind of like this. Now let's work on the rear leg pretty quickly. So, 
you have your hip over here, wedging at the top like that, and you have your bone running like this. You're gonna have the patella over here, and you're going to have the two shin bones running like this. And now you have the, essentially what's kind of the back where your heel is sticking out that way. You have the minor feet bones, the bottom of the ball joint, and then you can put in some nice big old claws over here. And for muscles, you're gonna have the quads, I believe, running along the top. You need to have a little bit of a bum. You have the hamstrings, the calf muscle right over here, and then you stretch. This is technically the Achilles tendon. And then you can put a little bit of muscle over here and over here. The dang, rear leg of a dragon, and some padding down here, don't forget that. For the front, pretty similar. You got your deltoids right over here. You got essentially what's the bicep, your forearm muscles. This is your elbow. You got your lats running this way, your triceps running here, a little bit of an elbow bone, it runs downwards, and then you can put in your little feetsies. And bam, front legs of a dragon. Now, I know people like putting horns and spikes everywhere, so maybe we, let's give this guy some spikes right over here, and maybe a big spike running on the back of there. That looks kind of silly, but we're gonna keep it. Now the important part is to remember that the dragon needs a massive pectoral muscle. That's your, that's the muscles that guys go Wah! with and makes their, you know, pectorals pop out. The dragon needs that because that's what's pulling its wings downwards. So let's put that in. Essentially, this is a second shoulder muscle running right over here and it's wrapping upwards over what can essentially be considered the bicep right over here. You got the massive lat uh, latissimus muscle running over the back. So you're gonna see a lot of muscle on the top of the dragon's wing bones. And in my eyes, these, these muscles kind of run under and in between these ones, but the pec muscle attaches over here and it needs to be super big. And I'm guessing it would connect over here and then the pec muscle over here would connect there. So you kind of have a giant double pectoral muscle running all over and you need to have a really strong sternum for that so it would end sharply over there right and cause a lovely little ridge muscle a lovely like ridge line coming this way and you can do whatever with everything else and then you got your collarbone and let's work on the head a bit because the person who asked was having difficulty with the head and the neck so from the side, I like making a general circle shape and a smaller circle running along, and then I connect them. That is the very base shape. It's kind of like an elongated cone. Let's get into specifics though. You have the eye socket, and you have the nose socket stopping right about there. And then you'd have a bunch of teeth, one, two jaw connections, and then off the brow is where I like personally putting horns and stuff. So you can go, let's make it look kind of Charizardy, and you know, bone is gonna show like that. Let's put another one over here, another one over here. It's a very classic, stereotypical looking dragon. And then you have one connection over here, one connection there, and then the bottom of your chin coming, and the ridge muscle, uh, not the ridge, the ridge bone, and you know, very, very classic looking dragon. And then imagine that the neck coming down this way is a giant tube like this. This means when we look at this from the front, let's look, let's look at the dragon's face from the front. So this is the side shape. It's kind of like a long tube, but let's flatten it out a bit. Cause I mean, you can technically draw the dragon's face like two giant circles, but then it looks a little bit cute. So let's square it off make it a tiny bit more masculine, if you will. I'm going to imagine that this shape looks like this from the front. I'm gonna imagine that this shape over here looks kind of like this. So we have opposite facing trapezoids. And so now I'm going to put essentially a long line running from here to here. And that's going to be the dragon's brow, right? We can put the eyes in here facing forwards. Nostrils can come this way. And then I'm gonna put the mouth facing downwards and coming out like this. And you're gonna get nice strong cheekbones and the jaw coming forward. And then we can start giving him some spikies. And since we're drawing horns in perspective, the horn looks like this from the front, right? Let's draw our little lines running on it, but it's circular. And so pointing directly backwards, when you flip that, it's that's what the bottom of your horn is going to look like, and it's going to disappear into perspective super fast like that. So essentially, you're drawing that. And then you can overlap the spikes in the front. Have your slit eyes. Look, this dragon's going what from side to side. And then remember that your neck 
is a cylinder. So we're going to imagine the beginning of the cylinder over here and it's running downwards. And then it's gonna connect over there. You're gonna get those giant wing muscles on either side. You're gonna get your pectorals down here. Shoulder muscles, like regular arm shoulder muscles right there and right there. And then arm muscles running down like this. And little feetsies. So that's kind of how I would approach drawing a dragon from the front. And then of course you can add whatever kind of neck plates you want. Now, three fourths on the face can be a little bit more difficult. Let's imagine, we're gonna start, let me pick up a different color quickly. So we have this square shape here, right? We have this front shape and we have the line running up from the side. Now from the front, we have one box shape, we have the second box shape, and then the intersections line here and here. Those are the ones you want to pay attention to if you're drawing a dragon like this. Remember, there are zillions of different ways to draw dragons. So what I'm going to do is a three-fourths view. So I'm going to imagine that the dragon's head is kind of like a box. So we took that circle over here, this shape, and we're turning it into this box. And I'm going to imagine that the snout is also a little box. I'm gonna put it like right about here and make the bottom slant downwards just to give it a bit more of an aggressive angle. Now I'm going to draw a connecting beam of some sorts from right over there to there, another one from here to here. And so now we have the bulk of the dragon's face and we can imagine that the eyes are over here. So let's start, let's start putting all these different shapes in, right? Run the horns backwards. So really all you're doing to build the dragon's body and frankly any body, anything physical, is break it into 3D shapes and then manipulate those 3D shapes and then redraw your dragon around them. Remember, the neck is a cylinder, it's gonna come back here. We're gonna draw the neck like this. And then you can add all sorts of really cool ridges and scales coming downwards. Let's bulk out that chin, make it come downwards. We can put the mouth on the front, run this backwards, eyes. Let's bulk out the nose a little bit. Nostrils are on the top of each box. Let's give it some really, really, really cool spikies. Maybe one on the nose running, remember, along the top and center of the box. Some cool scale ridge lines. Let's really, really mock in certain shapes. Let's make this a cool shape. My ex used to draw horns like this. And then we can start, you know, adding in some sort of a, some sort of belly uh, belly scales. So that's kind of a bit more of a three fourths view of the uh, dragon's face. Ah, don't do that to me. So that's kind of a very very quick way I would approach drawing a dragon. Now I oh we forgot the tail. Wait, the tail's super duper easy. Just imagine like a fat ribbon. So it has the top portion like this, and keep track of that top portion and then the side portion coming down like this, but it's turning sideways, so we need to tuck it in that way and then continue it on the bottom, right? And it's turning again, let's tuck it in and continue it on the other side. And suddenly we have a tail in 3D. Use the top area of the spine to define the form of your dragon wherever it goes. Very useful tip. And that means now, oh, we need to bulk down the tail a little bit. Now you can just, you know, add your weird spikies coming and they're going to come towards you in this direction. Then they're going to lift up again, comes towards you and then lift up again. And you can add some, I don't know, this dragon looks like it has veins more than uh, horns. So it's just blah, 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 blah. super duper fast dragon. Now, what about a dragon in flight, a dragon moving, something like that? That's when you have to start breaking the body apart into different shapes. So let me show you the shapes we're going to be working with. Let's take this and shift it up into the corner for a hot second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into red and we are going to break up the dragon's body shape, just like we did with the head. We got a kind of square shape. We got another square shape this way, essentially a tube connecting it. We got one tube moving down this way and one this way. Now we got a multi set of tubes like this, this, and this. Got the neck, which is one giant tube and remember our double square system with the line running through the top. Now for the wings, the wings are gonna be a little bit trickier. Remember the tail, you want to think of it as one long line and then connect the bottoms. So that's what we're gonna think of for the tail. But for the wings, it's a little bit more difficult. Sure, they're tube shaped, but they are also 3D. They expand into different directions. For instance, one 
If a dragon's holding its wings straight up, imagine that we just have a posing dragon right in front of us, because wings can be difficult from different, uh, different angles. Hey, stop making sounds. So a dragon from above holding its wings out, it might look something kind of like this, right? Wom, wom, wom. A dragon coming towards you though. Here, I'm going to outline this in a color that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run lines down the wing veins so they're easier to see. Because uh, an idea of what you're drawing in perspective is super important. So this is from the very front and I'm gonna draw some circles along here so we know exactly what that is. Now imagine the dragon's flying towards you. What's going to happen is if a dragon is flying just steadily, that that air is gonna push up on the wing veins underneath of it, kind of like like that, and they're gonna buckle upwards. Let me show you what that looks like. So from the front, you got your muscles, this flat part over here, so this is one. Here, let me, let me label these, it might be easier. Okay. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. So here's one, here's two, little hand, and here's three. Now the air is pushing upwards on it because that's how you fight gravity. You have to push downwards on the air so you go up. So air is being pushed is being uh, pushed upwards. So you have A, B, and C wingtips. So this is wingtip C. And you're gonna have B moving like this, and A is just gonna be directly there like that. But since the air is pushing upwards, if you even look at like how a parachute works, it goes whoomph like that, you're gonna have that happening there. It's just gonna go whoomph like that. It's gonna continue upwards. There's gonna be a whoomph between these two and then a big whoomph right over there and then it connects to the body. So that's kind, it looks a bit confusing, but that's kind of what a dragon's wing looks like in flight coming towards you, just like that. And then what if it curls in its arm really, really tightly? Like say it's just relaxing all of its limbs. So you got our dragon boy sitting over here and neck comes up this way, got the head over there, big smile, happy eyes, right? So it's going to be folding its arm backwards like this and it's gonna come forward and you have that little thumb over there, remember that. Then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, what are you gonna do with all that loose flaps, those wing membranes? Well, they're gonna be sagging downwards with gravity and attaching to each other just like that. And then the one most forward in perspective will be the one that's hanging visibly. And then you can kind of just erase the lines from the other ones. You're gonna to wanna to erase that too, right there. And then this one will probably be hanging out of perspective then coming back up, kind of like that. So that's how I would approach drawing those. Now, what about a dragon that's folding its wing halfway as it's flying? Now, that's a little bit trickier. I mean, trickier for somebody who hasn't tried it, but I know you can do it. So let's imagine a situation. This is the dragon's body and it's arcing in the air. Realize I started with my line right here. He's looking towards you and the wing is coming towards you in perspective. So we got the shoulder, the deltoid. Actually, let's push it, let's push it backwards. Shoulder, deltoid. I'm gonna round them over so they're easier to see the perspective. This one's coming this way, right? Hand is this way, but that right over here, C, running this way, is gonna be one, two, three, like this. And then B, coming behind it, one, two, three. And then A, running this way, one, two, three. You're going to get some really strange perspective like this because it's coming towards you, it's getting really close to your face. If you wanted to emphasize this even more, we could make it a lot bigger. Imagine it's coming towards you in the camera. See how big my hands are when they come towards you? So let's kind of take that concept and let's apply it to this wing right here. Bam, literally in your face. We need to extend that back now. But what about the other one? The other one's leading away from you in perspective. And quickly, let's draw a perspective line. We know that wingtip C over here is really close to you. So we're gonna draw perspective lines going like this. And that's kind of what we want to follow for the other wing. So that's gonna be facing away from you. See how I'm curving the lines this way instead of curving them up like that? Same thing. Curving away from you in perspective. And then it's gonna be coming this way. 
Remember to draw your lines if you get a little bit confused, going smaller and smaller, further and further away. So if this over here is the center line on his body, and this is the center line of the wing, see how it's taking up two blocks? We're gonna have to take this up two blocks too. So that's actually going to only be extending that far to the second block running backwards. And let's curve it up like we did the other one. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we can draw that like that. And suddenly we have two wings that look pretty good in perspective coming towards us. See, it's really not that hard. You just have to draw your lines and make sure you're measuring the perspective. The perspective, these, these lines right here, one, two, three, four, just in perspective, if you need to draw a wing, split it up like that. Super duper easy. So that's on wings. <laughs> what about a body in perspective? Let's take a light gray and let's draw out these body shapes we defined before. Remember, it's up here. We got the block shapes. Let's take those block shapes and let's draw them in a normal way now. So we're gonna draw a dragon in three fourths perspective, facing you, kind of. First, I'm gonna start with the main body shape. Now from the front, I kind of like giving a dragon a body shape a little bit like this. So thickest point is right kind of where the shoulders attach and it bows a little bit going upwards and then it bows in together going downwards. So we're going to take that general shape right over here. We're going to extend it backwards a little bit. And suddenly, bam, we have a chest shape. If you want, you can draw dotted lines to remember where everything else is. Now, the neck, as we remember, is a big cylinder. It's just kind of curvy. So I'm gonna put the neck over there starting and run it upwards. And then our head, if you remember, was a set of two blocks. So one block, let's put it in right over here. And the other itty bitty block with a kind of more downturn goes right over there. And if you want, you can put horns in there. So you remember what, you know, where is it going? Now our hips, a little block right back here. And that in-between part is kind of like a cylinder. So we've got the body of the dragon and we've got the head of the dragon. What about the arms? Well, if you've ever seen how I draw humans, I always remember where the two shoulders are and where the two edges of the hips are. Dragon's no different. So I'm gonna put one shoulder over here and one shoulder over here. I'm going to put one hip over here and the other one over there. It's kind of messy, so I'm going to erase in here a little bit. And now what about the wing shoulders? Well, they're a little bit higher up and a teeny bit further back because you want the wings to be in the center of the dragon's body so it can support it during flight. So I'm gonna put one over here like that and the other one is basically invisible. It's all the way on their side. So we're not gonna be seeing that. So bam, one, two, three, four, got it down. Let's, same thing. These over here are rectangles. So they're gonna be going backwards in perspective a little bit. Well, not rectangles, uh, cylinders. And then they're gonna be kind of coming towards you in perspective. You can put in a little block for where your feet are supposed to be. This one coming this way, and then that one going that way. And since it's a block, you can extend it. And remember, if you need to, add little circles to remind yourself that these are cylinders. And that's also how you shade it. Now, since the dragon has big old pecs, you can add a center line going down that way and remind yourself that you need to bulk it out a teeny bit. Now time for the back legs. It looks almost like we're drawing a dragon robot. Now this cylinder will be coming a little bit towards you in perspective because look how it goes forward, back and forward up here. So a little bit towards you, you can see the top and then another cylinder that's running a kind of a little bit backwards. And then the final one, another cylinder running down to the ground. Looks like a kind of like a big weird puppy dog in a way. The second one, just draw a little bit lighter if you want, you can draw a little claw over here and here too for the thumb claws. Now the wings. The wings can be a bit tricky depending on how you want to draw them. But remember, it goes backwards first. That's this part of your arm. And it comes forward towards you in perspective and you can make the claw hang downwards like this towards you. And then remember the fingers. One, two, three. And another one coming behind it. One, two, and let's wrap it like this. The final one two, three. Now it's kind of at rest, so it's not going to be sagging or drooping in any way, but you need to make an arc coming upwards to connect them. And it's an arc in perspective, so it's going to look a little bit weird. I'm going to start with the back one and move it like this. And we're going to go to that one. 
and then I'm going to move it down and connect it to the body. Now, there is membrane running between the fingers. You can use the knuckles as reference, just like that and that. There's gonna be another one right over there. And if it's confusing for you to look at this, then we can just erase. There's gonna be a line coming up this way. I'm gonna take this one away. And suddenly you have working dragon wings with the membranes in perspective. The other one's gonna be tricky because it's behind the dragon, but essentially you still have that going backwards. This one's gonna be coming forwards like this. And then your hand up there. Remember, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can connect them like this. And now since this is running all the way and connecting that way to somewhere over here, just like this one is, you need to connect that wing membrane and pull it downwards like that. So now you have a dragon in perspective with two wings. Remember what we said about the tail? Run it from the top of the body. Let's have it coming forwards like this. That's a super long tail. And I'm going to be paying attention to the top. Let's start from the base and it's coming towards us. So we have to curve it down like this and the opposite side is going to be popping up, right? And then bam, let's make it a long whip like tail. The tiny barb at the end this is going to be a barb dragon. So awesome. Look at that. We made a dragon in perspective. Let's, to let's tone down this layer a little bit. Let's make a new one on top and let's draw in our details. And bada bing, bada boom, that was about a seven minute dragon. Now I could go over other stuff like claw textures, how to, you know, hands. Essentially, if you want to draw a dragon's hand, look at a cat's paw crossed with an eagle's talon crossed with a human hand. That's kind of how I think of them. It's like, it's a multifaceted, multi-use tool, just like ours are. Now this boy has a bit of a big head and a small body. So I'm guessing he's a juvenile. I kind of like him. He's a cute one. I like this dragon. He's a cute dragon. So thank you for the person who requested this. You know who you are. I'm just not saying your name publicly for privacy reasons. I hope that helped everybody else. Just the basics of drawing the body and how to position the head and everything, how I usually go through it in my head. I used to do this for really accurate models. And then once, as you do with practice, you start reiterating it over and over again. You memorize it. You can just draw it straight up. When I'm doing super difficult poses though, I still return to these techniques because you know, sometimes even really good artists need to go back to basics. It's completely normal. This week will be another kind of light week when it comes to videos because yes, I do have actual life work to finish that pays and lets me eat food and keeps my electricity on. But until I finish that work, which should take another few days, it's not going to be that long. I will see you guys again. So thank you everybody for coming and joining and watching this rather lighthearted tutorial. It was really nice being able to go and draw something I really enjoy, especially being able to share the knowledge that I've been developing and accumulating since I was like, God, five years old. As per usual, drink your water, get your sleep, chase your dreams, and believe in yourself. I love you guys. Thank you for being part of this channel. And I will see you again later. Bye-bye. <laughs>